وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We begin as always by praising Allah, by asking Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his family and his companions. We're continuing with the theme of Birr al-Walideen. And in the previous episode, we had concluded with the ayah from Surah An-Nisa, in which Allah Azawajal said, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship Allah and don't make any partner with Him and have ihsan towards your parents. And we mentioned that ihsan here, there are two very important things that we should take from it. First of all, it is general. It covers every aspect of their lives and yours. And that's because Allah didn't specify a particular kind of ihsan in the ayah. He kept it general to every kind of ihsan. And the ihsan, we said it has two meanings. We said that it can relate to doing a good action, saying a good thing. قَوْلٌ uh, hasan, وَفِعْلٌ hasan, A good statement and a good action. And it can also relate to exceeding the expectations. And we said that from this we can take that we should be ahead of our parents' needs. We should be keen to do things for them before they ask for it. And we said that really you can't say that a person who does what their parents ask them, you can't really call that ihsan, not from both kinds of ihsan. It might fall under one kind of ihsan, as in ahsanta, you did something good, you did the right thing. Uh, but in terms of the ayah in which Allah Azawajal said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى That Allah commands justice and ihsan. That justice is that your parents ask uh, for something and you give it to them. Your parents require obedience and you obey them. But ihsan is to go beyond that. And that is that you you look after the needs of your parents before they even ask for them. And you avoid things that you know they would dislike before they uh, have to express that they dislike them. And inshallah ta'ala we're continuing on with looking at birrul walidain in the Quran. In, and we're going to move on to the ayah in Surah Al-Isra in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاخْفِرْ ذَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الظُّلِّ مِنَ الرحمة وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا And your Lord has commanded here قَضَى can mean حَكَمَ أَمَرَ that Allah Azza wa Jal has, has ruled or Allah Azza wa Jal has commanded وَصَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established uh, the command that you worship none but Him and as we said, just like we said in the ayah in Surah An-Nisa, this is Haqqullahi ala al-ibad. It is the right of Allah over His servants. And ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bihi shay'a. That they worship Him and they don't make any partner with Him. That is the right of Allah Azza wa Jal over His servants. And again here Allah Azza wa Jal follows up His right وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And have ihsan towards your parents. And we've spoken about that as we said in the commentary on the previous ayah. Then Allah Azza wa Jal said, إِمَّا يَبَلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا And if they reach old age, one of them or both of them. Here the question is, why did Allah Azza wa Jal mention old age? Because even from the ayah which precedes, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا There is no limit to the ihsan. 
it's not ihsan in old age. It's not ihsan when you are young or they are young or you are old or they are old. The ihsan is general in every kind of situation. So why highlight old age here? Old age here is not highlighted in a restrictive sense. In the, in the, in the sense that it's not restricting being good to your parents when they reach old age. However, it's because of the increased need when they're old. Perhaps when a parent is young, they don't have as much need of their children. They perhaps don't require, in fact, perhaps the, the balance is towards the other way. You know, the children are young and the parents are going through a great deal of hardship to look, all, look after those children when they are young. But when they reach old age, here is the malin, the expectation is that the parents will need the children. And that's why it is for an increased emphasis, but not to restrict. That means that the ruling here is not restricted to when they're old. It applies to when they're young and when they're old. But it has greater emphasis when they're older because of the expectation that they will have a greater need as they get older. And subhanAllah, as we said, many parents might be shy to express that need. They may be, even some of them, perhaps they don't sleep at night. Perhaps some of them, they cry and they feel within themselves great distress because their children don't do for them what they would wish for their children to do. But they can't find the words to express it or they feel like they might hurt their children by saying it. And subhanAllah, this looking after your parents when they are older. It's not that Islam restricts looking after your parents to when they're old, but Islam gives even greater emphasis when they are older to the general emphasis that is given throughout the whole you know, life of the parent. And from this is the, the sad situation that we see. And we know the Prophet وسلم, said, Let it man kana qablakum. You'll follow the ways of the people before you. We can see now that the tradition among the Ahl Kitab and among the people in the West, the people of the book and others, is to cast away their parents when they're old. That once their parent reaches a certain age, they put them into a care home or into a place where they are away from, you know, where the, the child doesn't have to be burdened by the uh, doesn't have to be burdened by their parents' needs at old age. Let me ask you a question. What would happen if you reversed that? What would happen for the tarbiyah of the child if the parent said, I don't want to be troubled by my child when they're so young and they're crying all the time and they need food and whatever. I'm going to put them in an orphanage until they reach 10 years old. What would the child feel? As a child, how would you feel if your parents said, I'm going to put them in a boarding school or orphanage or something. I'm going to take them away out of my sight until they reach 10 years old. I would say that it would hurt you as a, as a child to know that your parents wanted to be rid of you. Then how is it when the parent reaches old age that people don't feel shy to, you know, to, to just say, get my parents away from me. Just give them to someone else's care. SubhanAllah. And yet Allah mentioned the way that the parent looked after the child when they were, when they were small. So here is for the greater emphasis of the need of the parent when they reach old age. And Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Imma yablughanna 'indak al-kibara ahaduhuma aw kilahuma." One of them or both of them. Here the reason it mentions one of them or both of them is to clarify that the rights of the parents exist independently as well as collectively. And what that means is some people might understand because Allah always mentions al-waridain the two parents, the mother and the father, that they may understand that these rulings only apply when the mother and the father are both together, or that these rulings are reduced in importance if the parents divorce or separate, or if one of the parents dies. Uh, for example, if the mother dies and only the father is left alive. Somebody might say, well, perhaps the rulings are not so emphatic. Here Allah Azza wa Jal clarifies and explains to us that it makes no difference whether it is one parent or both parents. One of them or both of them. Do not say to them uf. Uf is the smallest word or the smallest sound that can be made to express 
displeasure. So for example, it's like a tut. You know, when you tut at someone, at the smallest thing that a person can do to express displeasure. And Allah mentioned the smallest thing in order to include all of the things that are more important than that, min babi awla, because they are more deserving. So for example, Allah didn't say, don't swear at them. And Allah didn't say, don't hit them. And Allah didn't say, don't abuse them or revile them. Because all of those things are more severe than uff. If uff is the smallest one of them, then by prohibiting the word uff, you prohibit every single thing that is more severe than it. So that includes even the, the glance or rolling your eyes at them or even uh, expressing displeasure or sighing like or huffing or becoming, you know, any expression. All of those are worse than uff. So if uff is prohibited and uff is the smallest of all of the words that can express displeasure or that can be considered to be rude, then everything else is included in babi awla because it's even more deserving. Wala tanharhuma and Allah Azza wa prohibited here wala uh, tanharhuma the meaning here of tanharhuma uh, is a zajr bilqawl it is uh, to rebuke someone or to push someone away to push someone away in the way that you speak to them and that might be that a parent requests something or asks for something and then the child speaks to them in a way that he zajar and there's like it's like they're reviling them or pushing them away in the way that they speak to them and this is you can draw a parallel in the statement of Allah Azza wa amma sa'ila fala tanhar as for the one who comes to ask you either to ask you knowledge or to ask you wealth fala tanhar don't uh, don't speak to them in a way or don't push them away through your speech and here this wala tanharhuma it even includes when they ask you to do something haram because there's no contradiction between not obeying them in the haram and between the statement of Allah Azza wa Jalla tanharhuma because when you disobey them in that which is haram because they ask you to do something which is haram and you have to decline uh, to do it that you still don't do that which includes this wala tanharhuma it includes this sort of reviling or rebuking or you know pushing them away in the way that you speak to them karima and here a person might understand from that wala tanharhuma that the best thing with regard to the parent is just to be silent and allah azza wa explained to you that even being silent is not enough that even being silent is not enough someone might say okay so i'm not supposed to make zajar i'm not supposed to rebuke them i'm not supposed to push them away or make them feel like i'm driving them away i'm not supposed to say oof so the best thing to do with your parents is just to be quiet La. no that's not what you're required to do you're required to say the most gracious and kind and noble words to them silence is not acceptable silence is not acceptable Rather, you have to actively make an effort to say the kindest, the most considerate, and the most noble words to them. Even silence is not acceptable. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الظُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ And lower the wing of humility to them from mercy. And that is that you show humility in front of them. You don't show any element of pride or superiority or authority or anything in that way towards them. Rather, you lower the wing of humility. You show that adhul, you show that humility and that you are under their authority and that you respect their position and you show mercy to them 
And it's the, the, the humility you show to them is not from fear. And that's why Allah said, Allah said, lower them the wing of humility out of mercy, not out of fear. And he didn't say min al-khawf. He didn't say that be humble and, and be respectful and show that kind of uh, humility before your parents out of fear. Out of fear, no. Out of rahmah, out of mercy. So that should be the way that you deal with your parents and the way that you lower yourself and you humble yourself and you behave with the utmost respect and kindness towards them is because of mercy, not because of fear. Because of mercy. And from the rights of the parent over the child is that the child makes dua for the parent and here this dua that is recommended in Surah Al-Isra and say, my Lord, have mercy on them as they, Rabbayani, they did the tarbiyah. They looked after me. They did tarbiyah. We spoke about tarbiyah already in the rights of the child. They did tarbiyah of me when I was small. The parent is what Allah has made the reason for you to exist on this earth. And that, at the minimum that a person can do, is to make dua for uh, their parents because ultimately they have to recognize that the reason that they exist on this earth uh, after the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal is that Allah Azza wa Jal made their parents the cause for their existence on this earth. And that's why even if a parent doesn't fulfill the tarbiyah of the child fully, or doesn't do everything that a parent should do for the child, that doesn't absolve the child of the obligation of birr al-walidin. That doesn't absolve the child of that. Because ultimately the child can't escape the fact that their mother uh, carried them wahan and ala wahan, hardship upon hardship. They can't escape that. And that brings us to our next, uh, our next ayah, in which Allah Azza wa Jalla said in Surah Luqman, وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنًا وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنَ أَنِشْكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيْكَ إِلَيَّ الْمَصِيرِ And we have commanded mankind with regard to his two parents i.e. to have ihsan towards his two parents and birr towards his two parents حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنًا His mother carried him in hardship or weakness upon weakness, hardship upon hardship. And some of the, uh, the ulama, they mention from the hardships is the hardship of the uh, pregnancy, the hardship of the labor, the hardship of the birth, the hardship of looking after the child when they are small, and then the hardships which come being a parent and the care the parents have for the child and the concern that they have for them. All of these are reasons why we have to give our parents that utmost kindness in the way that we deal with them. And that child for two years is weaned over a period of two, of two years until when they finish two years, they're, they're weaned from the, off the milk of their mother and onto the regular food. That you show gratitude to Allah wali walidayk. And to your parents. Ilay al Masir. To me is the return. I to Allah is the return. And here we brought this ayah to highlight the obligation of showing gratitude to your parents and thanks to them. And this also brings us to that topic that even if your parent wasn't there for you in the early part of your life, ultimately every one of us, Hamalathu Ummuhu wahnan ala wahan. Every one of us, their mother carried them with hardship and weakness upon weakness. Hardship upon hardship. Everyone. Every single one of us. Whether she was there after the birth for us and looked after us and took care of us, or whether there are some mothers who were not. But ultimately, if you can't escape the fact that his mother carried him in weakness upon weakness, then ultimately, you can't escape. That you show gratitude to Allah 
and to your parents. And here again, this way that Allah joins between the rights of Allah and the rights of the parents. And that's important that you don't neglect the right of Allah because ultimately you have to thank Allah before you thank anyone from Allah's creation. But when you thank Allah Azza wa Jal, it becomes obligatory upon you to thank your parents. Anishkur li wali walidayk. That you show gratitude to me, to Allah, and to your parents. And again, both parents are mentioned here and the ruling applies to one of them and both of them. And if there is only one of them alive, then it applies to whichever one of them is still alive. And even it continues after the parent passes away. And we're going to come to that later on when we look at uh, being good to your parents from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And being good to your parents is a sunnah from the sunan of the Anbiya Alayhim Salatu Wasallam. And that's why it is said about Isa Alayhi Salam وَبَرَّمْ بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجَعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا shaqiya. That Isa said that I am Barran بِوَالِدَتِي and we said bar is one of the two uh, subject nouns that refers to al-bir, that I have bir towards my mother. And here he mentioned his mother because Isa alayhi salam, of course, didn't have a father. He only had a mother. And so barran biwalidati, and I'm good to my mother. I do bir towards my mother. And we said bir mentions all of the types of, all of the types of good. And we said it mentions بالقول والفعل والإنفاق by what you say and what you do and what you spend and even الأمور القلبية the matters of the heart وبرا بوالدتي that I am good towards my mother and likewise from Yahya عليه السلام وبرا بوالديه ولم يكن جبارا عصية also in Surah Maryam this time ayah number 14 that regarding Yahya, that he was barran biwalidayh. He had bir towards his two parents. And he was not jabbaran asiyya. He was not uh, tyrannical, arrogant, and he was not sinful. As for the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is where we're going to get into some of the details as it relates to bir al-walidayn. So let's start now, just let's begin the topic of Bir al-Walidayn in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, that he said, radiyallahu an, سألت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أي العمل أحب إلى الله تعالى قال الصلاة على وقتها قال قلت ثم أي قال بر الوالدين قال قلت ثم أي قال الجهاد في سبيل الله متفق عليه Ibn Mas'ud he asked and this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim he said I asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم which of the deeds is most beloved to Allah the exalted look at the hirs the keenness of the sahaba to know abwab al-khayr the different means of good. Look at how they looked and explored every opportunity for good. He said, which of the deeds is the most beloved to Allah the Exalted? The Prophet ﷺ said, As-salatu ala waqtiha. It is salah on time. Praying salah on time. It's also mentioned in other hadith, uh, As-salatu fi awwali waqtiha. The salah at the earliest time. Ibn Mas'ud, he said, I said then which one after that? SubhanAllah, look at the keenness. He said, okay, prayer on time. Then what is the next best thing that a person can do? The Prophet ﷺ said, Birrul Walidain. That you have bir towards your parents. Excellent treatment and goodness, kindness uh, towards your parents. And this is the, the shahid here. That the Prophet ﷺ after the salah, the deed that he gave the most importance to was Bir al And then after that, Ibn Mas'ud, he said, Thumma ay, then which one? Then the Prophet Sallallahu he said, a jihad fi sabilillah. Subhanallah, jihad fi sabilillah, with its importance in Islam 
and the and the uh, huge rewards that are given. Uh, for example, the ahadith talk about a hundred levels that are prepared only for the mujahideen fi sabilillah. And yet, birrul walidain is better and was better in the sight of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam than al jihad fi sabilillah. With all of its hundred levels in paradise that are prepared for the mujahideen and so on and so forth, and still the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ranked birrul walidain to be more important than al jihad fi sabilillah. So this is a matter really that you have to place it in its proper importance. And what we see is from a lot of people uh, that we see is that people might become busy with al-mafdool and al-fadil. And this is from the tricks of the shaitan, that a person gets busy with things that are less important instead of those which are more important. So a person, for example, they say, I'm busy, I'm giving, for example, I'm giving da'wah. Or a person says, I'm busy uh, trying to help someone who is in need, a brother who's in need. Or I'm busy uh, studying, for example. And subhanAllah, they might neglect birrul walidain, which is more important and better in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. So subhanAllah, sometimes you don't let the shaitan confuse you. Now we're not taken away from those other actions. We've spoken extensively about the value of seeking knowledge and the importance of it. And the importance of uh, the, uh, the uh, for example, a da'wah on helping the needy and so on. But subhanAllah, for a person to close the door of birrul walidain and say that this is not important to me, doesn't rank high up, yet it ranked number two after the salah in the list of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you really need to, don't let the shaitan trick you. And that doesn't mean we neglect the other deeds. Everything has a balance. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned al-jihad fi sabilillah at the end of the hadith. And the Prophet ﷺ did, did this and the Sahaba did it. Radiallahu anhum. Uh, but ultimately, there has to be a, uh, a, an appreciation of the value of birr al-walidain. And that you don't take it that the... Or you don't allow the shaitan to confuse you. And a man says, oh, you know, yeah, my mom, you know, she asked me for something. I'll go do it later because right now I've got something really important. Like I'm reading Quran. La Allah. The, the, what you do for your parents is more important. As long as it doesn't conflict with the right of Allah. As long as it doesn't conflict with the right of Allah. So for example, in the fard prayer, the fard prayer is the right of Allah. It's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can't leave the fard prayer for your parents. You can't leave it for your parents have a need or something they require. But when it comes to the nawafil, that, that's a different, a different matter. So here we're not talking about ignoring the rights of Allah or minimizing the rights of Allah, but everything has to be in its proper place and time. But just the importance of birrul walidain and its value in the religion of Islam. And we have a hadith from Abi Hurairah. رضي الله عنه أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يجزي ولد والدا إلا أن يجده مملوكا فيشتريه فيعتقه. This hadith narrated by Imam uh, Imam Muslim in his Sahih that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, he said uh, that no child can ever pay back their father. Unless they find their father enslaved and they purchase him out of slavery and they free him from slavery. SubhanAllah. This hadith just shows you the, the great uh, importance of or the great role of the father. And later we're going to hear how the mother's role is even more important than that. That a person can't pay the father back for what he did unless he finds the father in a state of slavery and he purchases him and he sets him free. And one uh, point of benefit I want to mention regarding this is that some of the people of knowledge, they mentioned this hadith in the importance of conveying Islam to your parents. And the reason they did that or the, or the angle that they came from is that if freeing your father from slavery is the greatest thing that that child can do to pay back their father uh, is to free him from slavery then slavery to the shaitan and slavery to the worship of other than Allah 
is even more deserving of him freeing his father from by the permission of Allah. And it is minbabi awla, it's more deserving and more important. So for example, a person finds their father to be a non-Muslim and then conveys the message of Islam to them and they become Muslim, then this is minbabi awla, it's more deserving than finding him enslaved and freeing him. And it's a greater deed in the sight of Allah than freeing the father from slavery, uh, to free him from the slavery of worshipping the shaitan and the slavery of the nafs and the slavery of turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is uh, something that a child should be very keen to do, should be very keen to, if they have parents that are not Muslim, that they convey the message of Islam to them, perhaps they might have a, a nasib or a have a part of what is mentioned in this hadith. So that's all we have time for in this episode, but we're going to continue inshallah ta'ala with Birr al-Walidain from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we're going to talk about that insha'Allah ta'ala in the next episode and Allah Azza wa Jalla knows best was salatu was salam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Assalamu alaikum if you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running make sure you head over to amauathome.com